Arrowheads are stored as block definitions within AutoCAD. As you can see here, I've actually drawn the 19 that are available. I'm going to touch one of those, go over to my Properties palette. If you do not have that open, hit Control-1. Control-1 will turn it on and off, or down to the lines and arrows. And you can see as I cycle through this, if you look at my arrow, it's changing up there. I can go through each one of these showing all of the options available. The only thing we really need to do is we need to find out what these blocks are. If I insert the block into the drawing, typing insert the command prompt, I'm an architectural tick, I'm just gonna hit okay, and you'll see how the architectural tick is right there. How can we modify this block to create a new block and what are the parameters? In the next example, we are gonna create one simple new arrowhead to use in our definitions for dimensions and liters. Back in AutoCAD, we have an instance where we have an arrowhead on a block. If I touch the block, it's a simple arrowhead. But I want is the actual integral. A lot of people hit that, and, it's, and we're going to change it to the closed field to an integral. That shows it depicting that area of concrete. But what I want is a combination of the two. I want a solid filled arrow and that integral button. So I do need to create a custom arrowhead. So moving over to our block, it needs to be one by one in units, and it needs to be drawn on layer zero, and the properties need to be by block because these are blocks, and we want them to retain the properties of the remaining portions of the dimension or the multi-liter. So what I'm going to do first is just draw a line. So the home tab and the ribbon line, I'm going to go the extension from one unit. Then to make it easy on myself, I'm actually going to just insert home tab on the ribbon I'm going to insert one of the arrows already created so I'm going to insert the arrow right there then I'm going to type scale at the command prompt and I'm going to scale that object down just about 0.7 I don't want it that big because we want to actually put that integral part and I trim that line so you see that's all I did and I can explode these entities we don't want any blocks in here so now what I'm going to do is actually just use the arc command I'm going to free draw this from the endpoint here, just looking there, the endpoint there, and I'm going to hit enter for continue for my arc, and hit enter and there. So now we have our object that we want. Now we have the options of actually shading this area or leaving it open, but what we're going to do is we're going to shave it, hit enter, and hit OK. Now we have our block. Now we need to create our block. Up on the home tab and the ribbon, under the insert tab, create block. We're going to call this arrow area. That's our new arrow. The base point, we're going to pick it as this intersection point. The objects, we're going to select those. We're just going to select these by touching and a window crossing. Hit enter. We can give it a description. My new arrowhead. We want it to scale uniformly. And all these options can be retained right now. We're going to leave those default as now and we do want a unit list. Hit OK. So we've created a block and the block name is my new arrow. So now how do we add this to our multi-liter? Let's go back to our concrete area and we'll see how this reacts. We're going to select this here and we're going to go into close filled. We're going to have user arrow. It's going to have arrow area. I'm going to slide this over here just a little bit. Hit OK. And you'll see what happened is we have a new multi-liter, a new arrowhead to depict the concrete area in a little different way than what we would have done normally. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss how to create two additional arrowheads for use in AutoCAD. In this final lesson, we are going to use three separate objects to create three new arrowhead blocks. And you can see I've already created them for you. I've just done a fancy arrowhead, two arrows, and an arrowhead with a polyline there. So we're going to go through the first one and then you can do the second two on your own or from the data set. So I'm going to go into the Create Block tab on the Insert tab in the ribbon. I'm going to call this Arrow 1. The point, remember, has to be that zero comma, that intersection point right there. I'm going to go from left to right. I'm going to select my objects. Make sure you get everything in there. And hit OK. Give it a description. My fancy arrow. Hit OK. And so the block has been created. The one thing I do want to tell you is you notice that the colors by layer. What, it, what you really want to do is go to the block editor. 
and make sure the color of this block is by block. The reason for that is these are blocks that are created when you create a multi-leader on several different layers, it'll retain the multi-leader layer object properties. So we want it to be by block. So now we've created our three blocks. Now we need to test those out. We've now created our three new arrowheads and we want to put those to use or show you exactly how they react. So I have three multi-leaders in my drawing, arrow one, arrow two, and arrow three. My blocks, same names, arrow one, arrow two, and arrow three. We could add these to a multi-leader style on the annotate and the ribbon and go over here and create a new style and add your new arrows. But let's show you what they look like, arrow one. I'm gonna use properties again. I'm gonna go under close filled, select user arrow, arrow one, and you'll see it change to our new fancy arrow. Same thing for arrow two. I'm gonna go over to arrowhead again here on the properties pane, user arrow, arrow two, hit okay. And you notice they're a little bit small, so we can actually change the arrowhead side 0.25 just to get it a little bit bigger so you can see that we created them a little bit smaller than what the original was but the good thing is under properties you can actually change the size arrow three is our last one close filled the user arrow arrow three and you see on each of these arrow heads this one again I'm going to change to 0.3 a little bit bigger this one I'll change again we'll do 0.3 on that one as well so you can see. So you can see we have three new arrowheads created in AutoCAD that react just as they would on a multi-leader. You see I'm moving back and forth. I have my fancy arrow here. I wanted to pick something. And I also have my double-lined arrow there. In some cases, we may need to differentiate areas of the drawing or make them a little more obvious to the user that they are important. So creating custom arrowheads can prove to be very efficient and productive in AutoCAD.